So I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm Dmitry Leskov. I've been preparing this all night, and I hope this works. And actually, I decided to do a slides about 30 minutes ago. Uh, because uh, I didn't think that all of this can be explained with enough love and um, care by just using, you know, treating from the hip. So basically, there you go. This is a WebKit. It's a, a bunch of, it's a rendering engine that we use. Obviously, who doesn't know that? We you guys are probably in the wrong spot. Um, and uh, it's a fairly um, um, complex uh, piece of code. And basically, it has a, the structure is there's a web core, which is the, where the majority rendering occurs. And then there's JavaScript core, which we don't use. And uh, in JavaScript core, there is a sub-project or a subset of classes that's called WTF. Um, yes, really. Yes, it, that's really how it's called. And uh, it's um, Web Core Type Foundation, so there, or WebKit Type Foundation. And then there's uh, some threading um, stuff there um, because that was the easiest place to stick it into. Um, so you will find some really interesting nuggets of information like this as you start studying the code. Um, who am I looking at? I should be looking at everybody. And so uh, WebCore is where most of the magic is. And then uh, there's WebKit, which um, is essentially a, the glue layer or the, the, the uh, actual port of uh, WebCore. And there's one for Mac. There's one for Qt. There's one for um, Chromium coming soon. And uh, Darren is working on that. Where's Darren? Did he leave? He oh, now I can badmouth him all I want. Um, so. Uh, the directory structure is also fairly, um, if you look at the web core, it's fairly uh, straightforward. Um, pretty much all of the naming convention has now been made a little more, lo pretty much logical. You can kind of understand what's going on. Like bindings, for example, is where all of the bindings to JavaScript engines or Objective-C live. Uh, DOM, what deals with DOM, CSS deals with CSS, and so on and so forth. And um, so uh, what we do is, we um, we now have a formal we have a foothold in WebKit upstream, and this is our port, uh, which is uh, basically the Chromium port. You will see a bunch of directories like there's one for uh, platform Chromium, there's one for uh, graphics um, and uh, skier related things. There's Google URL that we implement um, very nicely. V8 obviously, and so this this looks really really cool. Uh, except um, have you guys seen? Uh, who hasn't seen uh, the Matrix? Okay, you haven't seen the Matrix. Okay, then this is going to be completely irrelevant for you. Um, have you guys seen this? Uh, one of those uh, famous action sh shots where uh, Keanu Reeves is like, uh, you know, dodging bullets, and he's like standing that way. And uh, if you were to be introduced to Keanu at this particular moment in time, you'd have a very uncomfortable impression of Keanu, because the guy basically walks like this. And so this is exactly how we, well, the, the impression that you would get if you look at our port right now, because we are in transition. And so there's a bunch of things that are supposed to be in the right spot, but they're not. And so we're, we're still moving. And so when you go look at, for example, V8 bindings, you'd find that some V8 bindings live in um, upstream proper, and some of them live in uh, source WebKit port bindings V8. And that's not because we're so smart. That's because we are still working on it. And so um, a lot of people get, um, I actually was asked today at lunch, is like, why some files are there? Why couldn't you just move them there? We're working on it right now. OK, so this is a resource constraint. This is not a matter of us picking and choosing what things we want to keep uh, downstream and upstream. It's all uh, going to move upstream one day sooner, sooner or later, uh, hopefully sooner. And so we also have now our own WebKit port which uh, Darren has birthed, and now he escaped so that he doesn't have to listen about it. Um, but it's, uh, it, it lives downstream, unfortunately, because it's very hard to kind of jiggle the wires very quickly and uh, adjust it if some breakage occurs. And so we build it up downstream, and then we're going to move it upstream wholesale, hopefully. And so um, one of the pleas that I have to you, uh, WebKit newbies, whoever you are, is um, if you um, want to learn WebKit, please help upstreaming. So any, um, any, um, anybody who has extra cycles or uh, is very actively interested in learning WebKit v bindings, for example, 
uh, please help upstreaming. What it involves is essentially grabbing a piece of um, V8 code, uh, V8 bindings code, and con making conform to WebKit um, code style, submitting it as a patch upstream, getting it landed, and then you'll feel really, really good. So, yes, and all of these patches count to your WebKit committer access, exactly. So this is all really um, helpful if you want to be like a committer, for example. And, uh, oh, by the way, it's not really uh, that much fun because sometimes you have to go through three or four rounds of uh, iterations based mostly on nitpicking nit and style um, uh, and style uh, violations. So it's sometimes very, very frustrating. But it teaches you patience, right? You know, this is the most exciting thing that you can learn. Or you have, if you have, like, a kid, then you're done. You're, you can do it very easily. Um, so... Um, we're also in a, this continuous effort of trying to unfork and uh, move ourselves out of the situation where we actually are a fork or a vendor branch um, of WebKit. And this is a very, uh, very um, um, hard work, and uh, we actually track it right here. And so you can see this is our current state. Uh, just this Monday... Uh, this was, uh, the count was down to 15, and um, thanks to a merge that I did on Monday afternoon, it's back to 34, because unfortunately sometimes the changes made upstream necessitate a fork in our, in our, um, in our port, and so now I have to go and work to remove that fork, which really sucks, but unfortunately that's what it is. So we have now removed, uh, not physically, but we removed um, uh, commit access to the third-party WebKit, so we try not to commit there at all, unless this is like a super-duper regression that blocks us uh, from um, releasing a dev branch or a dev build, for example. And uh, there's a daily merge. So um, every day somebody, some un unnamed hero, takes the changes from upstream and plops them down uh, onto um, our, our fork, and it's uh, sometimes a really hard process and a hair-pulling process of uh, figuring out what just happened because 100 layout tests just started failing uh, for no reason. And so, um, or you need to start forking things. But if you really want to learn WebKit, this is like the best way because you will daily touch various parts of code and you will have to study and figure out what's wrong. And so uh, this is how I learned WebKit, and I, I highly recommend it to anybody um, who wants to be it. So uh, currently the rotation is fixed, but Ian, are, aren't you working to making everybody a WebKit merger? This is going to be so great. It's just like a sheriff. Everybody will get to merge. Hopefully um, we'll unfork by then, but may, maybe not. So um, now I'm going to talk about tool set, what we're going to do for um, if you want to work on... Um, uh, WebKit, and that's very simple. Just use Git, and you're done. Um, well, actually, it's not that simple. Um, but one of the things you have to learn, if you're planning to work on a WebKit, forget your Windows machine, okay? Working on WebKit and stream, upstream is on, the web, on Windows is so hard that most of us have given up. By the way, I still do this, and I think it's fine. So if you want to do this, you can ask me. If you're Peter, you can still work, use Windows. But... Um, Ojan and can tell you that um, none of us, and I repeat, even you, Peter, none of us have been able to successfully run WebKit layout tests from upstream and succeed, because that requires pulling down all of the Mac fonts onto a Windows box, configuring your clear type just the right way, and all the just weirdness that comes with it. So it's it's really it's really painful. So if you ever if you want to work WebKit upstream, this is your Great excuse to get a Mac, if you want one. If you don't want one, then, you know, I can't help you, buddy. Um, so um, using Git is really, really helpful. Um, I have it set up. Can you guys see it okay? Yeah. So I ha I'll, I'll show you just a couple of things uh, in terms of Git. Um, it's a very helpful because it facilitates a much better workflow, uh, just like on any other product or perhaps more, in WebKit you will often be uh, having several patches in flight while they're uh, waiting review, and they, these patches will have to be caressed and loved a couple of times, and, you know, and so you'll have to tweak them. So having a multiple checkouts in SVN repository is just, is just wrong. So um, 
I highly recommend using um, using like a, a Git for for multiple branch workflow. We can have multiple branches in, in flight and then rebase. So I'll I'll do a quick demo if it works, right? So for example, I'm um, um, WebKit comes with some really or Git comes with some really cool stuff like uh, a shell completion. So for example, I have it configured so it always shows me the current branch I'm on which is land, which this is the branch I use to land somebody else's patches. And so um, I can see that there's nothing going on on this branch right now. Hello, come back. It's really fast. And then I can go to master branch and uh, it's usually much faster, I promise. Let me plug into power and uh, it's okay. So then I do git pull, for example, and I pull all of the um, changes from the, um, from my, from upstream, from, from the master branch, downstream, there it is, it's happening actually. Sorry. All right, so this is, this shows me what changes have been made. Really nice, everything's pretty. Uh -huh. And then I can say git um, rebase master land, for example. And what this does is it lifts up, lifts up any diffs or patches that I might have on land branch, applies uh, the changes that I just pulled, and then attempts to land or attempts to apply the patches that I have uh, onto this um, branch back. And it's a really cool process of uh, um, kind of a um, patch-based uh, um, um, SCM, so I really recommend it pretty much for anybody working on um, on WebKit. And like for example, one of the things you would see is um, I have multiple branches right there, and uh, pretty much like I have three inspector changes going on at the same time, because um, sometimes reviewers take a while to do it uh, to 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 go through through the process, and sometimes I need to uh, modify, and in order to keep Sanity. I have multiple multiple branches, and so I I could work on uh, any of this uh, separately, and then commit or rebase. And for more information, check with um, Evan, and he has a. I think we've taped it, right? There is a Git talk that you can go look at. It's really it's really great. Uh, one of the um, things that is really good about um, WebKit is they have integrated really well with web, uh, with uh, with Git. So um, their uh, prepare change log script um, works with Git, and their resolve change log scripts um, work with Git. And so SVN apply even works with Git. So all of these uh, tools that they have, all of the tool set is um, in place. And so um, I highly recommend using it because um, it, it, it keeps your sanity in terms of um, maintaining multiple patches in flight um, and shell completion. So um, if you're ever applying a patch uh, to WebKit, I highly recommend using SVN Apply because it does a lot more smart, smart things than, um, than a normal patch and it's just, it's just wonderful. Like for example, if you're applying your old patch uh, with a change log entry in it, it will automatically put it on top of the change log and change the date to today's date. So it's it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, and so I highly recommend using it. And of course, the um, whole collection of scripts there that you might look at, highly recommend looking at it because I I use only three, but there's more, and you probably could, you know, benefit from them in some way. Um, and uh, trackwebkit.org browser. Very helpful tool. Obviously, anybody who used um, Track before will be familiar with it, but it allows you to go look at the code and browse it online. It's much better than Vue, uh, VC, whatever that thing we have. So if, if there are any fanatics of Vue, VC, please, um, I don't mean it. Um, any questions on Git or anything? Um, any, anything I need to pause on? No? OK, yes. Hmm? Git X is a really good tool if you're using if you're on a Mac. I've never used it, but I heard it's good. 
Um, actually, Jeremy there who makes suggestions, he's the one who evangelized me on Git. And so I, I owe him a lot. Uh, WebKit testing, how do we test whether WebKit is good or not, or WebKit, whether a specific revision is good or not? Well, the primary uh, test tool, the vehicle that they have upstream is layout tests. And you guys are probably all familiar with what layout tests are. It's several thousand um, HTML files, sometimes SVG, sometimes um, XML files that, um, that you load in a browser and basically uh, look for a specific behavior, and all of this has been automated. Uh, downstream, we have test shell that allows us to run the, uh, the tests. Upstream, it's called dump render tree, highly misnamed, but you know I, ha I recommended that they rename it to test shell. They have, seem to have been resistant for some reason. Um, and so, and basically, it's really not a very good um, testing methodology, but that's what we have. Having a unit test. Um, uh, or more ex extensive methodology would probably, at, at, the, at this point, I don't think it's really feasible. So we're going with uh, layout tests, and the layout tests are born how? Anytime you find the regression, whenever you uh, fix a bug, you submit a layout test with it to make sure that this bug is not covered. And so this is how you obtain coverage. Instead of forward thinking, you're kind of reacting. And, and also there is a couple of test suites W3C suite, the Hixis SVG suites, Batic SVG, a bunch of them, CSS suite, um, but um, those those are rarely ever fail because they're kind of you know simple, uh, not that not that complicated, not not that big of an edge case. And then uh, obviously we have reliability tests. Uh, Chromebot gives us crashes, which is really great, and uh, uh, that's something they they don't have uh, downstream. So if um, you are ever in Builder. By the way, I'm a sheriff today. Let's see how we're doing. Tree's open. I don't know if that's because it's actually open. Oh, no, it's okay. Uh, or if that's because I'm missing. Uh, and nobody closed the tree for, for a good reason. <laughs> so um, there are reliability tests. Uh, is that it? No. Is that it? That's a really nice bot. And uh, this this is your really good indicator of, of something Ooh, look at that. So you would see that something happened, for example. We have new new crashes. And uh, reliability tests uh, uses Chromebot, right? Somebody correct me or not? All right, it's the same infrastructure. And it just is a really convenient way for you to quickly see uh, what happened. And so uh, you can you can look at the stack traces. This is something they the Mac people, or not Mac people, WebKit upstream does not have, so we benefit from this because um, we can discover things uh, that they cannot see. So anyway, we usually share those results uh, gladly because we need to fix them as well. Uh, and performance uh, tests, uh, obviously, who's not, who has not seen performance tests here? Do I even need to go look? You guys are fine. Oh, oh okay. Uh, let me look. Hello? Perf, click on perf, I clicked on perf. So you can see uh, very quickly uh, how each commit reflects. Uh, how, see how, how great we're doing? We have just recently implemented TC malloc um, allocator. So this brought down all of our um, numbers. And then we have fixed a major, uh, well, a major, but a, a, a bug in V8. So this really shows us. And when it goes the opposite way, then you're in trouble. You have to fix it. Peter usually comes and bugs you because he really watches those things. Well, you can come and bug me. Oh. So um, this is really useful because it allows you to see um, um, what's going on. Um, page Cycler, um, anybody knows what Page Cycler is? Did, did, has this been covered earlier? Have you guys been talking? Wow. So this is a huge emission, obviously. Um, um, so page cyclers are really cool things that um, essentially it's it's a bunch of HTML pages that we run uh, in su succession and uh, then track the time, memory, virtual bytes used, and things like this. And so it allows us to quickly measure if something is changed. So if there's a, a regression, then we have to go and look at specific revision 
Like, for example, ooh, this is a regression right here. Let's see what changed it. Crap. <laughs> my, my name on it. But no, this is just text, text, text expectations. But um, so there you go. Externalized strings, but not results, blah, 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 non strings. So it's something you have to look at the. Oh, and me too. Um, but anyway, uh, so any regressions, you can clearly see what changes caused it. You can see what kind of regression that is by clicking shift. Shift. Ah, oh, no. Can I? Come on. All right. So apparently Safari doesn't do that. But you usually can shift click and you can uh, then track down and see what percentage of regression that is. And uh, you can see specific re uh, revisions that um, that caused the failure. And then, uh, what is the orange line? That's the reference build. What a reference build is is that at some point in time we took our build that we had at the time and put it in a separate directory, and now we run it every time we run the reliability test, so that we know uh, that any fluctuation in the tests are not caused by some hardware changes or the machine fell ill. You can see that if the ref has not changed but the, um, the blue line has changed, that means that it's really a regression. Sometimes you would go come in the morning and you will see all of them go down because Nikolai has uh, rebooted the machine and suddenly it runs faster. But if both of them go at the same distance, you probably go, oh, that's really not a regression or anything. So that's what reference build is for. That's a great explanation. Sorry if I'm fumbling. But anyway, uh, this, is, this is how you usually look at WebKit and see what you've done. Um, uh, merges, if you're merging, this is one of the greatest um, things to watch for because even though your layout test may be uh, uh, passing, uh, Dave Hyatt upstream may have introduced some new code that uh, tremendously affects painting, for example. And you will see regressions, especially international or DHTML uh, um, uh, cycler that affect, uh, that, that uh, involve a lot of repainting. So you will, you can clearly see that, oh, this something happened. This 50 revisions of WebKit caused us to regress 30%. Roll back. <laughs> no, we usually just go and look and see. Um, one of the interesting things is uh, with Sheriffin, with the sheriff typically don't roll back the merge. So if a specific individual change may be rolled back, but merges rarely rolled, rolled back. So it may seem like a good thing, but actually it's a bad thing because it puts pressure on you as a merger to go and fix the regression rather than because nobody wants your regression. And yet you must go on. So it's, there you go. Uh, here's a simple uh, sample, simple sample. Uh, bug fix workflow um, for WebKit. So if, suppose you're fixing a WebKit bug. Um, it's, um, this illustrates how inefficient our system is and how much we need to unfork. So typically the way you do it is like this. You get your bug fixed locally, um, reviewed and LGTM'd, then take that patch, apply it to WebKit tree, prepare a patch, then get it reviewed on WebKit, and uh, then submit for review, so th then, then commit if you have a commit access. Uh, a couple of things uh, to, to mention is that uh, the etiquette of the web, WebKit Bugzilla um, is that when you attach a patch, don't designate a specific person. Like, you know, oh, Darren is a reviewer. I'm going to ask him to review it. Um, this is considered like a, um, a faux pas uh, from the WebKit uh, perspective. They get angry with us for some reason. So um, instead, I suggest highly to just CC Darren, and he will know. It's time to review. So anyway, blah. Are we recording this? Scratch that. Yes. <laughs> so um, one of the hardest things uh, by far in WebKit is uh, code style. It's different. It's very different. Like there is no 80 lines. A, um, the braces for methods go on the new line. Four, four, spa four characters, four spaces rather than two spaces. Lots of stuff like this. Uh, naming members, variables. And believe it or not, for Googlers, th that was the hardest part. Uh, that always is because most of the time your review comes back negative only because of the you know style violations. So if you've never written C++ code before, you're in luck. You'll be, you, you could learn this. If you've been a Googler for five years, you're, you're screwed. 
Um, I have five minutes, so I'm going to rush. So if you want to talk to the browser in your new code, like you're writing WebSockets or something like this, um, you need to use um, Chromium Bridge or the new WebKit API that Darren is cooking currently. Since it's in progress, you need to talk to him before doing anything, before even considering design decision, decisions, because he's the right guy to discuss these things. Um, now, now um, when you, if you're considering making changes to WebKit, uh, try to put your WebKit hat on and think about it this way. Uh, this is not a Chromium-specific change. This is a change that should benefit WebKit as a whole. So try to avoid making changes that are just for benefit of WebKit. So if you're writing WebSockets or a new functionality like HTML5 forms, think of it as this, I'm implementing it for WebKit, not for Chromium. Does that make sense? Um, and obviously be aware of other ports. So if, try not to break Qt or some other obscure ports that are on the build bot. Um, Becoming a committer is an easy task. It's just 10 patches, and it's something you definitely should consider doing. It's very easy. I mean, and a um, couple of upstreaming uh, patches, you know, a couple of bug fixes, you're there. Uh, WebKit prides itself on communication, so stay open, participate. Um, if you guys in Japan uh, still might consider going on the Pound WebKit, you'll be surprised that you'll find Apple engineers working at that time because they're really, really weird hours. Um, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And so um, any proposals, any ideas, highly recommend to circulate on WebKit-dev unless it involves forking code, <laughs> in which case I highly recommend talking to Ian first, and uh, he will triage it from there. And so... There you go. Any questions or comments? Done.